Hey everybody, Charles for HumbleMechanic.com. Today, we're gonna to be talking about what it means when our car has a system lean fault. All right, so as you can see, I have in front of me this giant intake that we're gonna be using to talk about what a system lean issue is. I get questions all the time. It says, hey Charles, I got a PO171 system lean fault. What do I need to replace? Or worse, I replaced this giant list of parts and my car is still having an issue. You know, this question is one of those huge it depends questions because system lean issues can be a broad range of things. Anything from a tiny crack in a vacuum line, a leaking gasket, or a giant gaping hole like something you see right here. Oh, and before we get started, I realize this intake is not set up properly. This is purely for demonstration purposes only. This is an integrated engineering intake for a Mark VI GTI, so the piping is not quite right the way it would be installed in the car, but this is set up so one, it fits on the table, and I can show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. So let's first talk about what system lean means. System lean is the perception by the ECM that there's unmetered air coming through the engine. I say it's perception because that may or may not actually be the case. If we have a sensor failing, it becomes a perception. If we have a vacuum line that's broken, then it's actual unmetered air. But the ECM doesn't really know the difference. All it knows is that, hey, I got some kind of unmetered air that I'm seeing in the system. And it does this by comparing the air in to the air out. So we use a sensor like a mass airflow meter to read the airflow coming in. Typically right about here is where an airflow meter would be. So our air's pulled in through the intake, it comes to here, we'll have an airflow meter in this area that reads the amount of air coming into the engine. It'll come through the intake, you know, in this case into the turbocharger, through the rest of the system, it goes through the combustion process, and then out the back end. And we'll have an oxygen sensor on the exhaust side that'll tell us the condition of the air coming out of the engine. The ECM will take those two readings and say, hey, everything's cool, we're running great, or we have a problem going on. If the ECM calculates and sees that there's a problem, it can actually compensate for those things. So if we have a system lean fault, again, that means we have a perception of too much air or not enough fuel. The ECM will actually start adding fuel little by little by little till the oxygen sensor voltage stabilizes. On Volkswagen and Audi, a lot of times what us as technicians will do is we'll jump into measuring value block 32 and use that as one of the value blocks to evaluate just how lean our engine is. And of course, we can also see this sometimes in an airflow meter reading or really in an oxygen sensor reading. When we're looking at it in an oxygen sensor reading, the lower the voltage from the oxygen sensor, the more lean of a condition we're dealing with. So if we have a 0.1 volt, now we know we're dealing with a lean condition. If we have a 0.9 volt, that's the opposite end of the spectrum, that's going to be a rich condition. And those specifics do depend on the engine and the manufacturer. So we know a little bit now about what system lean means, but how does that help us fix a car? One of the best things you can do with a system lean condition is a visual inspection. A good visual inspection probably will identify about 75% of the system lean conditions. You know, a system lean, again, it's unmetered air. So it's going to be the perception or actuality of an air leak between the airflow meter and to the oxygen sensor. So our airflow meter is going to be here. As air is pulled in, it's monitored, comes down the pipe. Uh-oh, we have a giant vacuum leak. This is going to be pulling in unmetered air. So we're gonna have this giant hole right here pulling in unmetered air and then going to the engine. The ECM can only compensate so much. If this giant hole were maybe just a tiny little crack, then our ECM could compensate for that. But because we have a big giant gaping hole, the ECM can't compensate. It's gonna peg as much fuel as it can to stabilize that air fuel ratio. So if we had this leak right here, it would cause a system lean fault. Now, on the other end of that, let's still go with our airflow meter is right here. If this boot was split right here, before our airflow meter, we wouldn't get a system lean fault because that air is still getting monitored, it's still getting measured as it comes into the intake. The only issue that we'd run to right here is that we would actually be having unfiltered air coming into our engine. While that won't necessarily cause a check engine light, it absolutely can because now our air is actually tumbling in past the airflow meter a little bit different. We also run the risk of pulling dirt, debris, and sand and junk 
into our intake, into our airflow meter, and then worst case scenario, pulling that into our engine. So when the O2 sensor down at the end, because that's the end monitor, right? Our airflow meter is the front monitor, our oxygen sensor is the end monitor. When that sees a lean condition, it tells the ECM, the ECM decides, okay, we're gonna bump, 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 bump. We're gonna raise the amount of fuel delivered into the engine. Typically that's done with an increase in injector pulse width. So if your injector pulse width is every two milliseconds, it may jump it up to two and a half to three. All of that really depends on what kind of engine, what kind of vehicle you're talking about. But the ECM will increase the amount of fuel to the engine. The ECM is also going to turn the check engine light to alert the driver, hey, you got a problem. And we can even deal with a vacuum leak that's big enough to make the car not even run. So system lean can definitely be an air issue. In fact, most of the time from what I've seen, it's an issue in the air system. But remember that I said it can also be a perception of too little fuel. It can be a fuel issue. We can be dealing with a weak fuel pump. We can be dealing with a clogged or damaged fuel filter. Anything to restrict or reduce the amount of fuel pressure or volume up to the engine can also trigger a system lean fault. Like I mentioned, the ECM will correct. We see that in value blocks as a percentage. So a perfect running engine would be a 0% correction. That rarely happens except right after you clear a fault. As we see our number increase, that means the ECM is saying, hey, I'm seeing a lean condition on the oxygen sensor. We need to increase the amount of fuel. So that number will tick up and up and up. And that can be anywhere from positive one, positive three, positive five. The value block will actually peg out at positive 25 or on the other side, negative 25. So we can use that to evaluate how lean of a condition we have. If our condition is only correcting 0.6%, we got nothing to worry about. That's normal. But if we see a correction of positive 10, now we know that we have a significant issue with fuel trim. Now, if we're seeing a positive 25, which is pegged out max all the way, that is typically the sign that we have a bad oxygen sensor. Oxygen sensors typically, not always, but typically die reading lean. The ECM will see that low voltage of the oxygen sensor and it dumps as much fuel as it can because it's looking for that voltage of the O2 sensor to come back up. And because it never sees that, it just keeps adding fuel and adding fuel till it's maxed all the way out. So that is usually a sign of a failing oxygen sensor. Remember with a lot of this stuff, this is kind of a it depends type thing. If I say every time that a fuel trim is pegged at plus 25, it's a bad oxygen sensor, I'm gonna be wrong a fair amount of times. So it's a sometimes, it's a usually type thing. We can't always rely on every time we have a system lean, it's a broken vacuum line. So how do we find system lean faults? Well, like I mentioned earlier, a visual inspection is gonna be your best friend. In fact, you guys saw the video that I did on my Passat diagnosing a system lean condition. I'm gonna link that video up. I really recommend you watch it. You see kind of the whole process of me trying to diagnose this system lean concern. So we need to start with a visual inspection. Look at all our hoses. Make sure we have clamps on them, unlike this one. You know, if we have a vacuum line that goes here and it's hanging off just a little bit, that's enough to cause a system lean concern. We also wanna make sure if we have any check valves in our air intake system that we account for those. Typically, when we deal with system lean, it's a junction like this or a curve where it comes up like this. You know, this is metal, so the odds are it's not gonna be here, but if this were a rubber boot, you know, a, a split right here may actually be a really common failure for a lean condition but it's really hard to see because the boot's gonna sort of be pushed together. We can also use something like an intake leak spray to help us diagnose it. As we're spraying this spray, if we hit that vacuum leak, it's gonna pull that chemical in, and typically our RPM will jump up, showing us that, hey, we're in the area of the problem. But from then, we do need to do that visual inspection in order to find that exact spot of failure. You know, people get confused about system rich and system lean issues all the time. In fact, it's one of probably the most confusing things for people to really grasp. But I've found that for me, instead of thinking as lean or rich, I like to think of what is the computer doing to compensate for the problem. If we have a system lean condition, we're going to see fuel being added. So our fuel correction is going to be positive, plus more fuel. So why would it do that? Why would it need to do that? Well, maybe we have a vacuum leak or maybe we're not getting enough fuel volume or pressure up to the engine. So the ECM is going to correct for that. On the other side of that, a system rich condition, now we have you know, what's perceived as not enough air or too much fuel. 
That's gonna be a negative number. That's gonna be the engine computer pulling fuel away from the engine and not delivering quite as much fuel. To me, when you think about it that way, it begins to help your mind understand that the computer is doing something to correct for a problem, here's what it's doing. And that always makes more sense to me because this can be a confusing topic. What can get really fun and kind of confusing is when we introduce a turbocharger to the situation. So on a normally aspirated engine, which is basically what we've been talking about today, air is simply pulled in the entire time, right? It's pulled, sucked in, because our engine is basically, for lack of any way better to describe it, a vacuum pump. Air gets pulled in, air gets pushed out. When we introduce a turbocharger to the situation, now we have a different condition other than simply air being pulled in. Now we're pushing air in. So if we had a vacuum leak, and let's say our turbocharger was here, so we have pulled air in, we turbocharge it, right? We pressurize it. Now we have pressure coming this way. So with that pressure, you remember before this was going to be a vacuum leak, it was pulling air in. Now instead of pulling air in, this hole is actually gonna let air get pushed out. This is sort of the opposite side of what was happening on our normally aspirated car. So when we're dealing with cars that are turbocharged, system rich, system lean conditions, it sort of flips everything on its head, but only under a boost condition everything at idle is still going to function and behave the same way. All right, so there you have it. That is all about System Lean. There's a lot. I know this was a pretty heavy, deep show on System Lean, but it's a topic that gets really confusing to people. And if, again, we think about it as what is the ECM doing to correct for a problem, then we can understand what it's seeing. Now we can use our brain and use our diagnostic skills to help us find where the problem is coming from. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. If you have any questions or comments, post it in the comments section below. Hey, if you like the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe on YouTube or on the blog at HumbleMechanic.com. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the blog, and obviously right here on YouTube. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Shout out to uh, Integrated Engineering for hooking me up with this intake. Uh, I know I haven't installed it on a car yet, but man, it made for a really great demonstration.